On this episode of The Hall, we're putting the Coyote and the EcoBoost head to head here on the dyno and at the track to see how a simple tune affects both. Now that V8 versus EcoBoost debate has been a very popular topic of discussion ever since the two engines debuted side by side on the 2011 model year F-150s. Now back then, that first iteration of the 3.5 twin turbo EcoBoost made 365 horsepower and 420 pound-feet of torque respectively at the crank, whereas its V8 sibling made 360 horsepower and 380 pound-feet of torque. Now fast forward to today and the latest variants of these two engines have grown up a bit since their initial offerings. Case in point, the 3.5 EcoBoost behind me is now making 375 horsepower and a whopping 470 pound-feet of torque at the crank. Now the V8 got a little bit more love too in the form of more compression 12 to 1 along with that same dual style fuel injection shared by the EcoBoost which now allows the Rev Happy Coyote 5 liter to produce 395 horsepower and 400 pound-feet of torque to the crank. And while it's safe to say a lot has certainly changed between these two engines over the years, a few things have certainly not, right? The EcoBoost here is still going to tow the most weight thanks to its torque, while the V8 is going to sound a hell of a lot better while making a little bit more high-end horsepower. So what's the goal of today's video? Well, we have both of these engines represented in their latest and greatest form, both backed by the 10-speed automatic transmission and both with a 355 rear gear. And we're gonna see which one basically performs better with tuning and nothing else. To do so, we're gonna hit our dyno here in the shop and then we're gonna take both of these donkeys to the track and see how they run. We've already reached out to our friends at Bama Performance. They sent over a couple of 93 octane tunes for both trucks and we are gonna be using the SCT X4 devices to upload the tunes to either truck. We're gonna grab a baseline run first from our EcoBoost, then tune it, see how it does, repeat the process for our five liter truck over here as well. Now I do wanna point out guys that both trucks will be run in fifth gear due to the speed limiter in stock form. We're gonna rerun the truck in fifth gear after they're tuned. And again, both trucks do have the same exact factory tire size and wheels in the rear to keep things as consistent as possible. Now after we determine our game see which one does a little bit better on the dyno. We're gonna settle things the old-fashioned way, take these things to Maple Grove, run them down the quarter mile, and see who performs better. So it's gonna be a fun one, guys. Like, comment, subscribe. You should know the deal by now, but enough talking. Let's get strapping and see who wins. So a baseline run is in the books here for the 3.5 EcoBoost. Now we're gonna upload our Bama Tune 93 octane and then uh, see how we improve. All right, so let's crunch some numbers here now that the 2017 3.5 EcoBoost is done both baseline and tune. Baseline numbers, 321, 370 at the tires. Now, when you factor in drivetrain loss, roughly 15%, horsepower is pretty much right on the money compared to the 375 number. Torque, a little low here at the tires for us. That might be a function of being in fifth gear, but that's what we had to do again, speed limiter based. So with that said, we did rerun the truck in fifth gear with that Bama 93 octane tune. And here's what we're looking at. 373 horsepower now and 403 pound-feet of torque to the tires. Same gear, same octane, you get the picture. Let's talk gains. Now peak gains, that's gonna be 52 horsepower, 33 pound-feet of torque peak. Peak's not the big story here. As always with these EcoBoost engines, you're seeing massive gains under the curve, as are we with this particular option. 83 horsepower and 80 pound-feet of torque, both at 5,500 RPM. A little uncharacteristic. Typically, those big torque gains here with the 3.5 Eco are down low. With the Bama Tune, they're a little higher, which is nice because once you actually start ringing this thing out, you can see those stock numbers tend to nose over and basically nosedive. Uh, with the Bama Tune, they carry on a little bit further into the power range here, and instead of kind of falling on its face now, it's maintaining that power band, and that's why you're seeing those massive curve gains up high in the RPM range. So there you go. As always, these EcoBoosts are stellar performers with a tune only, and uh, basically backed us up right here with this option. So now we're gonna get this guy unstrapped, get it out of the dyno cell, we'll bring in the five liter 2018 truck, strap it down, and repeat the process.
Well guys, quick update here. After our baseline and tuned runs with the EcoBoost, I'd say the uh, five liter here has a pretty decent chance of putting out some pretty similar numbers as far as gains, especially after the baseline run here in our 18 five liter truck. So gonna be a little bit more interesting than I originally thought just with the dyno portion. And if this thing picks up like I think it should, should make the track very interesting in a little bit. We just wrapped up the second of two tuned dyno runs here at the 2018 five liter truck. I just like to do that to eliminate the possibility of any hero runs, make sure everything's consistent. And it was, so let's break down numbers. 353, 341, bone stock, fifth gear pool, 93 octane, which is pretty impressive when you consider the drivetrain loss, roughly 15%. Uh, with those advertised crank numbers, I would say this thing's almost outperforming those numbers. Very cool. But now, since this video is all about seeing how these things pick up with the tune, let's talk about that. 366, 355 again, rear tires, 93 octane, with that Bama 93 octane tune. So what do we learn? Obviously not nearly as impressive as the EcoBoost, right? But still no slouch. I mean, that's 13 horsepower, 14 pound-feet of torque peak over those baseline numbers, and 34 horsepower and 31 pound-feet of torque under the curve, right around 4,000 RPM. So right in the meat or the heart of the power band for you. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna get rid of this baseline run, and we're gonna pull up our tuned EcoBoost run and really break down the tail of the tape, right? And no surprise, the EcoBoost is just outperforming the Coyote tune for tune. And when you think about it, with a naturally aspirated application like this, there's really only so much you can tweak with an aftermarket tune, air fuel, cam time, and things like that. With the EcoBoost, you can do all of that plus increase the boost. So you have a lot more going for you with just a tune only on the EcoBoost platform. And we really see that here with our final dyno numbers, tune for tune. So what does this all mean when it comes time for the track? Well, I'm actually pretty excited because horsepower is pretty much a push. And then of course the Eco is making roughly about 50 pound feet of torque more to the tire. Only one way to settle this thing, time to get these things to the track and see how they do. Well, here we are guys, lovely Maple Grove Raceway. We just got these things off the dyno, as you saw. Just wanna let you know, we did flash them back to stock first. We are gonna run them bone stock and then flash them with the 93 octane Bama Performance Tune to see which one really improves more with a tune and nothing else. Uh, again, both trucks are 355 gear trucks, both Super Cruise, uh, both on 33 inch tall tires. So about as evenly matched as you can get. The blue truck does have a slightly bigger lift, but it did make 50 more foot pounds to the tire. So I'd say it's a push all in all. Only one way to find out which one of these things is gonna come out on top. Let's get to the line. All right, guys, so here we are. First run of the day. We're in the 3.5 EcoBoost truck. No burnout, because we're launching it in four high. I'm gonna do two runs. I'm gonna leave it in four high the whole way, one pass. And then we'll try actually switching it to two wheel drive after the launch on the second pass. So here we go. Come on, big girl. What do you got? All right. So first pass with the EcoBoost was 1480 at 92 miles an hour. So now what I'll do is we'll launch it again four high. You know, we'll try to build up some RPM and some boost off the line. And then once the truck feels like it's hooked up, we'll switch it back to two high and see if it actually improves. All right, let's see what we did. Okay, so it went a little faster, uh, 1460 at 93. So we'll do the same thing with the five liter truck. We'll launch it in four high, keep it in four high, and then we'll do four high to two wheel after 60 foot. And then we'll tune these pigs and see how they run. Fourteen ninety. Okay, so very close so far. About on par with the EcoBoost's first run in four high the whole way through. But now we're gonna do our little switcheroo after the sixty foot and see if that helps improve our times like it did with the EcoBoost. Oh yeah. I feel like it definitely picked up that time. 
We've got ourselves a race, huh? Look at that, 1460s at 95. So we're right on pace with the EcoBoost stock for stock. But of course, you guys know the point of this video is to see how well these things pick up with nothing more than a tune alone. So that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna park this puppy right next to our blue EcoBoost truck. We're gonna flash both of them with the 93 octane Bama Performance tune, rerun the trucks again, and see what the results are. Let's get tuning. All right, so this thing's off to the races tuning. What I'm gonna do now is basically hop out jump in the EcoBoost truck and start the process over there as well. All right, so here we go, program the vehicle. And at this point, the EcoBoost is tuning as well. So we'll just take a couple of minutes, let these tunes load up, and then get them back to the line, starting with the EcoBoost. All right, guys, so we're tuned, starting off in the EcoBoost again. And uh, we're just gonna go from that four high to two wheel drive switch, because that seemed to work well for us the first time around. So here we go. Felt like it got off the line a little better that time. Come on, Big Blue. Go, baby, go. Man, it went a little faster. 1430 at 95, that's awesome. Now, we're gonna hop in the five liter truck and we'll do the same all over again and see where these things end up. Come on, baby. Whoa. According to my dashboard, looks like the little five liter here was getting after it. Tune versus tune, let's see what we got. Ah, slower. 1450 at 95. All right, so there you go, huh? Well guys, let's recap what we learned in today's video, shall we? Now tune for tune on the dyno, those horsepower figures were pretty much a push, right? But Torque advantages certainly go to the EcoBoost here, making nearly 50 foot-pounds more to the tire. What did that mean here at the track? Well, ultimately, both of these trucks, stock for stock, went 1460s, which is pretty impressive. However, once those tunes were in play, the EcoBoost and its added torque was certainly the clear-cut victor going 1430 to the Coyote's 1450 tune for tune. Now, that's not to say the Coyote here did not pick up. It certainly did, and it did perform pretty well. However, again, you can't front on that EcoBoost platform and all of the power you can add from a tune alone. It really is impressive. So we wanna know what you guys think. What are you, Team Coyote, Team EcoBoost? Which modifications do you like for your truck? Definitely get involved in the comments if you wouldn't mind. And if you dig our content, be sure to subscribe as well. That's gonna wrap us up for this episode of The Haul from Maple Grove Raceway. We hope you enjoyed it. Remember, for all things F-150, keep it right here at americantrucks.com.